Hello class. The purpose of this video is to kind of go over the final uh, submission, right? And help you understand what it is you need to do. So I created a folder here just to demonstrate. I made a new folder and I renamed it seven underscore three final and then my last name, right? So something like that would be good. Let's keep our final submissions nice and organized. And this is what I'd like you to do um, or something similar. Um, but essentially I have the, you know, the folders that we'll need and that will guide us into what you need to submit. So for the final submission, I have this ref folder that stands for reference. And in here, there's nothing in here cause it's just a demonstration, but the reference that you gathered for your prop will go in here. So there should be a minimum of five images, right? That you use to inspire your prop, um, and to model your prop. Additionally, in this folder, there should also be the concept art. So every student was asked to create two sketches, right, of your, your future props. So that should also go in here. Those can be individual files, just JPEGs are fine, or PNGs. Or you could combine them all in like a Word doc or, or whatever. But so long as they're there and I can access them, that's all that matters. All right, the next one is the models, right? So we need the high poly and the low poly. And in here, you can do a couple different things. You could either uh, submit a scene, and that scene should ideally have both of the models in it, the high poly and the low poly. Um, or you could export your models as FBX models, okay? FBX. So one of those. Either way, we need both models inside of this folder. Um, double check that they open properly, like after you save them, try and open them from this folder and make sure that what I see is what you want me to see um, and that nothing is corrupted or anything like that. If you have questions about this, reach out and ask. I'm always happy to help you. Next, we have the animation. So the class is asking everyone to create an animation um, of their prop. And I'm going to show, just like demonstrate how to do that here uh, in a second, as well as just kind of talk about some, like give you some ideas about how to approach that. Um, but you'll save it in here. And what I would like to see is the scene, right? Like the workable, editable scene where more or less keyframes could be added and I can see your keyframes, um, as well as a play blast. In other words, right, a short, just quick render of, of the video. If you refer back to the tutorial that I created for the bouncing ball assignment, um, you know, that will, you know, remind you how to set up a play blast properly. Okay. So we'll come back to that in a second. Next is the turntable. And we just covered how to do this. Um, there is a slight difference though. And I'm going to talk about that now. Uh, so, but essentially you'll have your low poly prop, not the high poly, but the low poly. And what I've done here is I pulled up a, a really old prop that I had lying around that I modeled years ago. Um, and I've set up some lighting for a turntable. And you can see if I, if I hit play here, it rotates. And this is a good speed. This is about 10 seconds for the rotation. For this, I'm using 24 frames per second. You can see that when it loops back around, it's seamless. So on frame one, right, if I go to the... If I select the chair, you can see rotate Y is at zero, and then frame 240, 10 seconds later, it's at negative 360. And because of that, it's going to continue to um, uh, like cycle, right? Loop, which is good. So the only difference here between what you've done before and what you'll do for this is that you're going to do a couple different rotations. You need to do a rotation that looks like this, right? In other words, um, <clears throat> right, lighting is set up correctly and we're in shaded mode. We just see the untextured version of your prop. And then another rotation where we can see the wireframe. Now there are a bunch of ways to capture the wireframe of the object. So if you want to render um, like composite a bunch of frames together like we did in the last assignment with the um, you know, with After Effects, what you can do is you can go to your render settings, which is this clapboard, which is right here with the little gear on it. I'm going to go to, um, I want to change this to Maya Hardware 2.0, Maya Hardware 2.0, 
um, render options, scroll down. And where it says render mode, shaded and textured, you can change this to wire on shaded like this and hit close. We can do a very quick test uh, by clicking on this. And you can see now that I can actually see the wireframe on all my renders, right? So for the first batch render, you're going to go in here, make sure this is just on um, like uh, shaded and textured and then render out 240 frames, right? And then you do, don't change the camera, right? Don't edit the camera or anything. And then as soon as you're done with that, you'd come up back here and change this to uh, um, wire on shaded, right? Okay, so in the end, you should have a single video that has um, at least two rotations in it. Each rotation, ideally should take 10 seconds. The first rotation should just be a shaded view. In other words, just a single like default material like this that rotates around with the lights on. The second, uh, the second rotation should be the same thing, but with the wire on shaded turned on so we can see the wireframe, okay? Um, alternatively, you can try and stitch together two play blasts, uh, but it should be seamless, okay? And it should be the single rotation. If you submit two different videos, you'll end up losing points on this, okay? All right, let's move on. Here I have the chair again, right? Uh, I'm gonna hit five to turn off lighting. And so you're supposed to create an animation for your prop model, okay? Uh, I'm gonna delete my history real quick. And that animation is gonna be different depending on what it is that you, um, right, what it is that um, you modeled, right? So some of you modeled swords, others modeled chests, um, and those objects, you know, you're gonna have to come up with something that kind of makes sense. You'll end up doing best on this assignment if the animation is, you know, relatively simple and understandable, right? I'm not looking for necessarily like Pixar level professional quality animation, just evidence that you understand how to set keys and make the object move in such a way that I understand what your intention is without any other context other than just the object itself moving. So it could be that let's say you're doing a sword or something um, and maybe you want it to hack into something and, uh, and then stay there. You know, you can make yourself a very simple prop. I'm not looking for you to model something. If you do this, only use a, like a polygon primitive. But here, right, maybe the sword swings in and gets stuck into the side, into this piece, right, like, uh, and hits there. That would be quite understandable. If it's um, a different object, you know, maybe it falls, you know, maybe it falls off of the top of, of something and then kind of clatters or tumbles to the ground. Um, perhaps, you know, if it's an object that has multiple parts, which all of your objects should have multiple parts, then we see it functioning in some way. And that's what I'm gonna do with this chair. So this is another good reason why you, especially in hard surface modeling, why you want to model the object in multiple pieces rather than in a single piece, right? Which is something I keep repeating over and over. All right, so let's say I wanna create a very simple animation for this chair. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this lever move and then the chair go down. Now, something to note is that this class doesn't really teach about rigging or setting up controls that I, you know, that I saw. Um, and normally you do not directly animate the mesh, um, but you can for, for this assignment if you want. Uh, just know that normally you don't do that. Normally there's a process of actually rigging like like rigging this up okay um all right so i'm going to select the entire chair and make sure i'm on frame one <coughs> and i'll hit s and what that's going to do is select every single piece and just say hey at the very start of the animation i want um you know i want the chair to be here okay let's say the animation is going to be five seconds long if that's the case, then five seconds is 120 frames. That might be too long, um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. 
All right, so what I want to do, we need to kind of plan this out. And before you start just playing around with setting keys, you need to actually understand what your goal is and gather reference if you can. In other words, if you're going to have one object fall off of another object and skitter to the floor, either find reference online of that happening that you can kind of analyze or videotape and create your own reference. You will end up losing points if your animation looks like uh, it's underwater or on the moon, right? If the timing and spacing is off. Timing and spacing is the most important. Um, th they are the most important principles of animation. So that is what I'm going to be looking at for, you know, the most timing and spacing. All right. So for this, I want the handle to move and then the chair to go down and then the handle to return to its spot when it's uh, done moving. So let's say that we want an establishing shot. We don't want to just start moving. We want the audience to get a chance to, to breathe and just see the scene before the movement happens. So I'll say at frame 24, I'm going to hit key this. Um, whoops. I'm going to key this again at frame 24, right? Which is one second. So I'll select everything and hit S um, to set a key there. So nothing happens. Then at frame 24, which is one second later, let's go to frame uh, 25 and or actually no frame 24 let's go to frame let's say s frame i don't know let's just try frame 35 i'm going to select this lever because that's what's going to move i move the pivot towards the bottom up here so that when i rotate it around see how it rotates on the base um i can let's rotate it this way in the z let's make this a nice whole number and then i'll key that right so now we have this all right so this moves up and then when that activates all the way the whole thing will go down so i'm going to select all of these pieces except for the base i'll hit w and then let's say it's gonna it's 35 here let's say it takes um a couple seconds so that would be 83 so I'll go to frame 83 and then I'll move this down to a new location let's say this is the lowest extent let's make sure that I'm not clipping that through okay that would make sense and then I'll hit S here to set that key and then once it gets to the lowest let's have this handle return to where it was so um let's go to frame 90 let's say rotate z set that to zero right click key selected all right i'm going to go ahead and play this and see what it looks like okay so i think that when this moves initially that is too slow that's my first assessment so I'm actually going to go to frame 24, um, or actually no, I'll go to frame, let's like just this, I'm going to go to frame 35, and I hold shift, click on frame 35, and then I'm going to drag this over to frame 30. Now let's see, let's check that speed out. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, one issue is that the chair starts because I didn't change when the chair moves, it's starting to move before. Um, so let's select all of this again. And on, let's see. So on frame, let's go to frame 30 and translate Y. Let's change this to zero and right click key selected. There we go. Okay, that's good. So what well, we can, and we, we do want some extra frames at the end to kind of, again, let the audience just kind of, you know, let the animation resolve. So, but we probably don't need 
90 to we probably don't need 30 extra frames let's just give ourselves uh, another second um, right so that's one, 114 so here up at 114 let's play it one last time now I do think it's when it drops it is a little slow actually if I wanted to change that I could select you know select all of this select uh, hold shift click and drag select these and then use the middle arrows and drag it to decrease the amount of time uh, that happens in between there so now we get something that looks like this that's a bit better maybe a little too slow still Let's bring that to frame 50. Okay, that looks a bit more mechanical and believable. Let's bring this down to um, 80. All right, so I mean, this is super simple, but if someone were to submit something like this, I could tell that they put some thought into it, right? Uh, the timing and spacing is fine. It's mechanical, so there's not really any ease in, ease out, right? It's just occurring, and that's okay for this prop. But everyone's is going to be different, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for proper spacing and timing. Uh, what you're going to submit is the scene itself, so I can look at your keyframes. I think I mentioned this before, right? I can select this and look at your keyframes. Um, and, you know, I could go into animation and look at your graph editor to see what that looks like um, and then uh, also a play blast so right click and go through the play blast thing like we did in the past okay so that's what you'll submit for that all right that's it if you do have questions obviously you know feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help you and um, yeah good luck bye